What's up YouTube? We're going to make a 10th prediction check today uh, after the Belgian Grand Prix and yeah, let's start. Here's my new format with animations and well first check of Kimi, Re Kimi retiring. Kimi Raikkonen has said nothing about his retirement and it is said that he will probably keep his seats by next year so we don't know yet it's going to be confirmed at Monza probably but we still don't know four different teams win races no this is actually an epic fail as you can see here only the top three have won races with Mercedes winning five Red Bull winning three and Ferrari winning five including the Belgian Grand Prix so no Honda good but unreliable I originally intended it for good races and bad races which yes absolutely happened uh, in fact we have that point since the China when in Bahrain they had a, an amazing race with Pierre Gasly finished second and in China well they crashed into each other so this point has been positive for us for some time and then came Chamber to point out that that Red Toro Rosso have used more engine components than anyone else including Hartley being sent to the back of the grid a few times so yeah we have that point and we have it we've had it for some time 15 cars getting engine penalties we had 12 as of the Hungarian Grand Prix um, and suddenly 4 were given engine penalties and sent to the back of the grid one of them Valtteri Bottas we already, we already had him counted but we now have um, a total of 14 penalties so one more and we are done we have the 4 points Here's the recount if you want to pause and uh, get a detail. But so far, this is our count. We have 14. We still have the half point and one left, and we get the full point. McLaren did not ruin the orange livery, neither did Red Bull get a fancy, unique livery. In fact, they've been using the same livery for the last few years and you may remember that in Spain we were talking about the halo and how it saved Fukuzumi's life and now in Belgium it saved um, Charles Leclerc from, from reuniting with his mentor I wanna laugh but I'm not going to basically if the halo had not been there Fernando Alonso's tire would have been thrown directly to Leclerc's face. IndyCar has not adopted the Formula 1 shield as far as I know, but I'm gonna wait for Chain Bat to say for sure. Um, Super Hard used only once. All of them uh, have been um, announced and um, turns out that just like I suspected, oh I... well um, Abu Dhabi is missing here, but it's using Hypersoft, Ultrasoft, Supersoft, meaning that we only saw the hard tire in Silverstone. So, hard tire, half point, we get the half point. Liberty Media did overcompensate on grid girls in a way that does in fact spice up the pre-race show. Because, well, they put in the new intro in a way that that in while well, watching the beginning of the race you can't see the grid kids just like there are no well difficult for me to explain if it makes sense there are no grid girls so there, there are no grid kids and they are not showing the grid kids in the beginning but they did make this famous intro so yeah 2021 rules include the MGUH. Um, we thought no, but Mercedes are already saying that it is a step back. So, yeah, 
you will have to wait. Bottas fourth or lower, P4 or lower, and in the drivers' championship, well, he is P4 so far and pretty well behind. So unless a miracle happens, it's going to be difficult. Red Bull definitely will not sign Fernando Alonso since he is retiring after four dreadful, horrifying years with McLaren. It was just about time that he would just throw off the towel and get out. Red Bull did, however, sign Honda. This, of course, seems like old news, but yeah. Red Bull Honda will be a thing in 2019. Aerodynamic rules on ground effect, we don't know. Alonso did win the 24 hours of Le Mans, which was an absolutely brilliant move. The, the stewards did help him in Le Mans, but he deserved the win. Yeah, one new race winner, Chamber probably wouldn't like the fact that I'm saying this, but I'm counting Max Verstappen and his victory in Austria because it's the first time he ever wins without the Kvyat boost. You may remember 2016 Spain and 2017 Malaysia and Mexico. He won because Daniel Kvyat had been demoted. Why? We don't know. Probably the supernatural. Who knows? But the thing is, he, w he did win the first three times with the Kvyat boost and in Austria we won he won without it. So yeah, Vettel outscoring Kimi 2 to 1. In Hungary we thought not even close, but Vettel won and Kimi retired, which is the best case scenario for us at this moment, bringing the rate up to 1.46. Yeah. Uh, Red Bull finishing second is going to be pretty much impossible. In fact, there are many, many points behind um, Ferrari, so yeah, they are not going to finish second. They are pretty much guaranteed to finish third. Um, William, seventh or worse, is pretty much guaranteed at this point. Yeah, you see these two that are going to finish last in the championship. Uh, rubbish red flag, we did have it in Monaco because of a loose manhole cover. So, yeah. With that, we know that in the chamber board, we have a total of 9 points out of 25. So, yeah. Here comes to my predictions board, and you may notice this little um, blue cross, because during the British Grand Prix, I tweeted this um, that was liked by 149 people at the time I last checked including WTF1 which I did not have an appearance of uh, in internet best reactions yet I did post my reactions for the um, Belgian Grand Prix but I'm not sure it will appear yet no one of course has came out of the closet and Fernando Alonso well he did make a resting pick reference uh, when he appeared manipulating a TV camera to me that counts and also Formula 1 did a bit of a video where he appeared which also counts but I'm already counting that one the topless pictures how about we make a little recounts because we've made a lot of progress since the Hungarian Grand Prix. We have Esteban Ocon that we were previously taking this photo, but he recently, during the, um, the summer break, he uploaded this one, which arguably looks even more beautiful. Um, Lewis Hamilton, this one for, for Tommy Hilfinger. Well, yeah, he looks good, but it's it's almost certain that he's photoshopped. Instead, this is him all natural, just the way he is. Which, yeah, we're taking that one. Pierre Gasly, we were taking this one, but now we are taking this other one from the summer break, which I would argue looks even better. 
Lance Stroll, we were taking this one, a half point elevated to a half to a full point after the, after the Monaco Grand Prix. But this was uploaded during the um, the summer break by one of his fan accounts. Uh, Lance Stroll himself apparently deleted his Instagram, and I'm not saying because there was news about it, but because the Instagram that I would use to follow disappeared. Uh, Daniel Ricciardo keeps his photo from the 20th of March, which leaves... Ah, and Charles Leclerc finally uploaded this one during the, um, during the summer break. So, yeah, he have 100% of the point. All the um, topless pictures we were um, expecting, we got them. And with all the um, tiny check marks done, we can finally eliminate them and replace them with a large tick mark. Um, a Russia joke, I we had originally thought that we had to wait until the Russian Grand Prix, but in the Canadian Grand Prix, Force India said this. So, yeah. Kimi angry on Team Radio, he was not exactly amused to not have his drink in Hungary. We forgot to connect the drink, bro. Yes, confirmed. Is the drink? Is it on now? Okay, I'm not. Uh, we forgot to connect, Jimmy. You will not have the drink, sorry. Is it on or not? The drink? No. Jimmy. Let me know. No. You will not have the. No, no, no. Is the switch on or not? You, you mean the slow button? No, no. Is my drinking? Is it emptying the bottle or not? No, no, Jimmy. No. You will not have the drink. Yeah, we're taking that one. Crashes in Monaco and Singapore. We did have that um, crash in Monaco with Charles Leclerc. So, yeah, um, Singapore. We're gonna have to wait until the um, until September. A race without DNFs. China. Holy! Sh they all finished. Technically, Hartley did retire, so that's a half point for us, and no one has been disqualified. Even when they should have, um, notably Roman Grosjean in Spain. And next prediction for Princess Dressgate and Hamilton Singh Karma. Well, at this point, Princess Dressgate speaks almost for itself. I'm so sad right now. Look at my nephew. Why are you wearing a princess dress? Is this what you got for Christmas? <laughs> Why did you ask for a princess dress for Christmas? Boys don't wear princess dresses! If that's not karma, then I don't know what is. So, non-native speaker of Spanish giving an interview in Spanish. We did have it with uh, Felipe Massa in Spain before the actual race. Un gusto verte de vuelta en la parrilla como presidente de la SICA, además, ¿no? Well, actually, as a as a uh, friend, you know, como un amigo, estoy aquí para. Well, we have that point. First race, ten races with first lap drama. Finally, with that ginormous crash in Belgium, we have the full ten, and now we can count it as a full point for our board. Being sent to the back of the grid twice, you may remember hardly being sent to the back of the grid for the second time. But here's a little recount. We see that Brendan Hartley has been sent to the back of the grid a total of four times. And, well, he has been the only one to have been sent to the back of the grid more than once. So, yeah, we've had the uh, point for some time. Verstappen, driver of the day, of course, we had that in... Austria, where he won his first race without the Kvyat boost. So, yeah. Driver of the day, no larger than one third. Then, then again, with Vettel getting driver of the day in, in Belgium, even though Bottas deserved it a lot more. But, yeah. So far, this is our count, and yes, I'm still counting Perez for Azerbaijan. Ocon on the podium hasn't happened. 
we were hoping it would happen in in Belgium, but was not to be, since, yeah. But Perez did get his podium in Azerbaijan. Half point. Mexico Trophy, of course, we're gonna have to wait until October, but we know which four people, one of, if any one of these gives the, a trophy in the Mexican Grand Prix, we're gonna get the full points. Uh, with uh, no injuries or deaths, yeah, we have that since Bahrain cancelled because of, yeah, Francesco Sigarini. Andres Manuel won the general action here in Mexico with an absolute landslide. In fact, it's the first unrigged election in Mexican history where the winner gets more than 50% of the vote. God help us all. Verstappen doing something stupid. Well, you have not only China, but also Monaco. Well, yeah, this happened. So, yes, we have a point. We'll get used to the halo, of course, Fukuzumi in Spain. But, oh, but also, Charles Leclerc in Belgium, where the halo pretty much saved his life. Pit stop problems, 10 races, um, we already have that point, and we continue to some more points, because here in Belgium, Pierre Gasly had a bit of a flip-flop uh, problem, had a, had a bit of a plop, uh, flop exiting the pit lane, and he did a bit of a um, spin, so yeah, Force India haven't smashed into each other, and they spent a lot of the Belgian Grand Prix in adjacent places. Which many people are going to be shutting up that they did not crash into about them crashing into each other every time. They didn't crash into each other. Which is amazing. And we have the, um, the half point since they went into administration. Mexican Besa devaluating. We have that point since the election. And even though the Mexican peso has recovered value, I refuse to let that go. And the 29th of September going terribly wrong, we're gonna have to wait until a little later than the Singapore Grand Prix. So, yeah. For that, we have a total of 15 points. 15 and a half points on my predictions board. Which, if you add to the 9 in the, um, the Chamber Prediction Board, we have 24.5 out of 50. So, yeah. The, um, um, this Friday, we're going to have the beginnings of the Italian Grand Prix. So, that's going to be a good thing. And, yeah, let's look at Championship Span. A Championship Span, uh, you can calculate it with this formula. And once you can... And once you get to zero, you're out of contention for the for the championship. And as of the Belgian Grand Prix, with Lewis Hamilton a championship leader and two hundred with two hundred and thirty one points and two hundred points still yet to be contested, we had the first few drivers to get out of contention. In the Hungarian Grand Prix. Everyone was still in contention with Sergei Sorotkin having 12 points in span and we know that he would lose his span in Belgium and he did spectacularly. In fact, if you look at the chart right now, you're going to see that Sainz and everyone behind him has now lost the championship span with Sorotkin going from negative 12 to negative 31 yeah and yeah that that includes Charles Leclerc is now out of contention for the championship and for the for the constructors championship uh, we still had Force India with a span of 101 but of course they effectively they were effectively eliminated and 
replaced with the Racing Point Force India, so they no longer have Span. And the first few teams to lose the Span are already out of contention, which is Toro Rosso, Sauber, Williams, and Racing Point Force India is, of course, out of contention, even though he's scoring points, but it is going to be mathematically impossible for them to be... Um, champions, but then again, we knew they were not going to be. You can now follow me on Instagram. Um, yeah, I'm going to post some um, Formula One. I may be posting some Formula One jokes and updates on what I know, but until next time, I'll guess I'll see you on the... Um, the Italian Grand Prix, so see you later, and thanks for watching.